it would not have been possible to produce all of the sessions and content for Punchback Print and bring you all of this content for free without the help of our amazing sponsors. So without further ado, here is a quick word from one of them. With A4 sheets used as the metric, total print volumes globally are due to grow steadily to 49.5 trillion A4 sheets by 2024. With the incidence of those processed using a full MIS platform due to rise by 23%. Now, the experts with us today, Nick Roberts from Cognizant and Phil Gaskin from XMPy, will explore this brave new world of digital data sourcing and how artificial intelligence can be harnessed to help business ident businesses identify new customer demographics and then engage with them in a meaningful way through a mix of highly targeted and personalized print and digital communications. This really is the cutting edge right here. So Nick, um, if you wouldn't mind leading us off, we will get into the session. Absolutely. Hello, Brendan. Hello, uh, Punchback Print. Um, absolute pleasure to, be, um, and Phil, of course, uh, absolute pleasure to be here. Yeah, as I mentioned, I'm from Cognizant. Uh, we are a B2B computer software SaaS business. Um, we've, we've employed a data-driven approach to sales acceleration through our own global B2B database. Here's some kind of headline stuff, 400 million profiles, 10 million companies, 20 million directors, 14,000 technologies. Um, with a compliance engine, we also have other tools as well. Found 2016, grown consistently 100% year on year. Um, and here's some kind of interesting facts. And I'm, I'm Nick, I'm probably number nine, started 2017 partnership manager. So, um, so this is, this is um, not a little brag, but this is um, it's, it's kind of an interesting context to the the presentation itself. Here's the Cognizant year-to-date performance. And um, uh, we actually, uh, you know, obviously uh, as most people, everyone in March, we, we were affected by the COVID situation. Um, our, um, our, our, our ideal customer personas, which I'll come on to a bit later on, they um, are recruitment and event companies. And obviously, very sadly, they were um, kind of, uh, kind of, frozen out of business and that affects us quite heavily. So we, we've had to use a data-driven approach uh, more so in, in during this COVID period to, to get things going again. So this is, uh, you can see that where we had a blip in March, now we're coming, moving forward again. Um, so um, that, we'll come back to that a bit later on, but I, yeah, so I, I was really interesting to learn about, I did some research for this presentation, um, learning about the print wave revolution. Uh, Apologies if I'm teaching anyone stuff they've already known, but um, <laughs> just get some context for the presentation. So really interesting hearing like in, in, in 1440, how the printing revolution started with Johannes Gutenberg, a German printing press invention. Uh, the business as usual was hand copying one, one of, one, a few pages a day. And then suddenly he, bring, he brings in his, his uh, printing press, which was allowed 3,600 pages a day, which is uh, transformative, uh, incredible. And uh, you know, we've seen over the, the decade, the centuries, uh, in the 16th century, 20 million volumes, 17th century, 200 million volumes. Obviously, industrial printing and, and, the, and the wonderful, awesome stuff that happens uh, that we're seeing today. Um, I have a little, uh, a little connection. Actually, before I joined Cognizant, I actually had my own embroidery business. So I absolutely love um, printing and the, the creation of stuff. So um, there's a little extra little caveat there. Um, and obviously, We've, what, what's yeah, this revolution? The printing revolution has, has given birth to a uh, increase in literacy, cultural self awareness, learning. But most importantly, more relevant today is actually marketing, sales, and business uh, capabilities. Um, and as a little caveat, I did my I, my I was able to under, <laughs> I drew a connection between what what press is the printing press and the press and the enterprise of publication and printing. So that was a um, <laughs> forgive me for that, that old tedious observation there. So um, anyway, so moving on, <laughs> talking about um, the current sales and marketing situation and data. So what I'm, what I'm seeing today is there's an equivalent situation arising in sales and marketing data. And that's been pronounced by this current COVID uh, situation, which has unfortunately happened, but we've just got to deal with it. And we're seeing that traditional methods are, are just uh, becoming less effective. Uh, the whole passive lead form and, and calling the inbounds and 
1.0 of sales where you give a sales rep um, a, 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 a job and they, they spend 50% of their time researching and then calling kind of almost aimlessly. And then the reliance and referrals and advertising, these, these methods are becoming very ineffective. And um, there is an opportunity, just like the print wave, for companies to use data, uh, a sales approach to weather this environment and, and, and actually progress themselves. So um, with this a bit more context, yeah, as we know, there's, a, there's several cha channels of sales. So you can, you know, the, the government uh, supplier is upselling. You've got the inbound type of channel where you're relying on referrals, kind of content marketing, SEO, and the networking event uh, kind of um, sales channel. And then what we champion here at Cognizant is the outbound, the proactive approach. And there's a really interesting book called uh, Predictable Revenue by Aaron Ross. And this is where you can proactively uh, understand who, you, who, who is interested in your, your business, who you can sell to, and you go out to the marketplace and you actually go at them and then you can drive sales towards you. So what we're seeing on the right hand side is the, um, the, the concept of hot coals. So at the beginning, you, when you start a business or start a new product line, you can, you can um, drive revenue from, from the, the, you know, the, the three other channels you know, through your own uh, relationships, the network, network. But then eventually you will come across this, the, the hot coals concept where you, 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 you run out of, of, of your network. And uh, you, to get any further growth, you need to start employing outbound methodologies where you, 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 you can connect, you can find the people who are you know, proactive, who are going to be interested in, in your business. Just moving forward, I, I can tell you at Cognizant, like I said, I'm coming back to my chart from before. As I, as I said, are we, we're, one of our main three uh, personas were, 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 was recruitment and event companies. And they, you know, that completely got obliterated, and we were um, we were paralysed. We, we were losing sales, so we 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 um, had a self appraisal, and then um, did did uh, did some analyses, and, and then we realised that that now our, our, our top three personas have changed. It's now you know what these what you're seeing here: computer software, them to fifty, marketing, advertising, them to fifty, information technology, them to fifty, and and now that this um, this essence of the IC ideal customer persona is it runs through the whole business through through sales but into customer success and operations and um so if i come back for other companies who are tr tr you know want to understand their ideal customer persona so you can see at the bottom here there's two methodologies i would uh, uh suggest that you undertake and the one is uh when you're existing business if you are i would suggest you look through your current customer base your crm and if it's necessary clean it but but enrich that data so you can get that insight who the ideal customer persona is. So um, we've done some work for an uh, embroidery business and uh, we, we, we cleaned and enriched their database and we could tell them, we, we, we were using, um, uh, we can tell them what you've got here, we can, we can find that ideal customer persona for them. And on the left you can see industries and on the, the, the x-axis along the top you can see the size of industry. and here we were able to tell, but we cleaned the data, we then analyzed it, the, the, the frequency of those kind of businesses. And um, so we were able to tell them that their top three personas was uh, marketing, advertising, them to 50, higher education, one to 5,000, marketing, advertising, one to 10. Um, and then, um, uh, so the, 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 the second methodology to do the straight data approach to, to determine your ideal customer persona is for newer businesses or a company who've got a new product is to do find their persona by campaign iteration and what this means is you uh, find, uh you um get get these these companies uh build some content and over a period of a month say uh engage with them and then see how well the the engagement is with those companies and you can see we've got five personas here and we've got this various stats across in, in terms of um, you know, how, how level of engagement. And, we, and you can see here that the best persona from these five was the delicate sales UK events where we've got 41% replied and 42% click links. So there, there's two methodologies to find your ideal customer persona. And that, that is super critical to, to driving a data driven approach within your company. Um, the next step is once you've, you know the, the companies that you, your ideal customer is, you've got to find the contact level data 
for these companies. So you've got to find who the decision maker is, the, the name, job title, and then the, way, the means to actually contact that list. The, the email, a high quality email, the, the phone, mobile phone number is incredibly important in these, these days. And social selling is also very, very useful. And then and any extra information that's going to help you connect with them, and connect, understand their, their pain points and where your, your, your solution can solve those. And then other relevant connecting data is what technology they use or the current vendor, the competitor vendor that you're, you're, you're attempting to displace. And then even more ideally, the expiry of that, 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 uh, that, that, that technology. And then what, what, what we're finding incredibly useful is actually getting in touch with the person at the right time. Um, these are called sales triggers. Uh, we've been really incredibly useful at Cognizant, knowing when someone's just joined a job, uh, when someone's joined, joined a job, they're really open-minded to new ideas because they, they want to create a high impact in their role. And if they've got some funding or uh, hiring or what events they've appeared at previously, these can be all really good uh, intent uh, data that can really help you um, kind of get progressive sales process with these guys. Another, another quick win we find is that in your customer data, if you, when you do that refresh operation, if you can determine any of the customers who have moved to another co a company and they're evangelists of you, that is that's that's a quick win, super re hot red meat for the sales reps. Another super important point, uh, so is that um, you're, you, you've got to keep on top of your data. That uh, if anything hasn't been touched for over a year, we that needs to be queried, like because data is decaying at thirty percent per annum. People are changing jobs, getting promotions very quickly. So that's, that's one super important note, note to make. And then another point is, 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 is managing this data in a very uh, compliant GDPR fashion. So if someone's opting out, you need to, that has to be recorded. Um, also be aware of TPS, Telephone Preference Service, people who do not want to be called. Uh, provide unsubscribe links. And uh, if, if people are asking where you got the data from, be very transparent. And if, if, you, if you manage your data in a, this in a, in a very um, compliant way, then not only you get build credibility, but it just it, it, yeah, it, it's it, it's good business pra practice. And so what here at Cognizant, we can we, we we build that data list for our customers very quickly. Um, and you can see some some of the columns here of the nature of the day, eighteen data points. So this this because a sales rep could spend fifty percent of their time gathering the data, but if they can get it in their possession, the high quality, then that's going to make them incredibly much more effective. And uh, further steps. So action and data obviously is super important. And I'm, I'm sure Phil has got some uh, awesome insights uh, um, that we're going to share about X Empire, which I'm really excited to hear about. But um, so uh, we, we were, depending on your role, whether you're a brand manager or you know, in a sales and in a, in a, in a print business, uh, the combo out outreach for sales, so call, email, social print, um, email campaigns, advertising, and then really important in this data-driven approach is actually to, to keep on top of the reporting and analysis, so monitor the inputs, the outputs, activity weekly and monthly against your benchmarks, know your, know your conversion rates, and continue question, is, that, is your hypothesis on that ideal customer persona, is it correct? Are you, are you channeling your, your efforts appropriately? And at Cognizant, this is uh, about a year ago. We had we would have this reporting about the number of uh, meetings booked. Uh, whether they, then they would become sales qualified if they were conformed to BANT, so budget authority need and timing, and then we, the opportunities and the, the, knowing the number of these events happening every month meant we could stay atop of, of of our sales progression, and we were able to avoid the hot coals and uh, keep our growth figures going that uh, you know, we're incredibly proud of to, to this day. Um, and our other extra value adding processes, have a sales playbook, feedback loops, uh, yeah, technology, X and Pi is gonna talk, we're looking forward to do, and culture, market, and some other stuff here. And um, other extra practical steps for print is once you've got on top of your uh, kind of data approach to sales, and you become a master of that, and, and you, not only you're going to be much more effective in your own efforts, you, this, there's an opportunity for this, for that, to offer that as a service to your customers. So you, 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 you could help your customers determine their ideal customer personas and offer that as a service. And that can also feed into your project management where you know what kind of audience, the, the audience that are going to be uh, tailored to the, the project. So you, 
again, that can improve the quality of your outputs. So Phil, um, we'll now move to you. And this completes the next part in this chain because it's fascinating that this top technology exists. It didn't exist in the way it does now five years ago. Um, how can people use this incredible rich data to then apply it using technology such as yours to actually add value to their customers' businesses? Thank you, um, Brendan. So, um, and, and great presentation, Nick. Um, yeah, well, XMPI actually has been um, providing omni-channel um, communication um, solutions for over 20 years um, and been using data to actually drive very creative and very relevant um, customer communications in a very interactive way. Um, and I've got a very short presentation that I'm going to take you through now to try and explain and position how XMPI can help using that data to then take it on and actually to develop complete customer uh, unique journeys and experiences from that data and actually drive incremental data that's based on behavior as well. Um, so yeah, my name is Phil Gaskin, I'm Business Development Channel Manager uh, at XMPI, responsible for the business in the UK, Ireland and the Middle East. And as I just mentioned, um, XMPI is really a leading technology for creating engaging, personalized, but relevant communications across print and digital media touch points. So you just heard previously from Nick at Cognizant about how important it is to have clean, intelligent data to accelerate sales. Um, well, XMPI consumes data and we use that data to actually drive powerful, relevant communications in print and digital channels. In fact, at XMPI, we love data and the more data that you have, the more accurate that data is. And the more that you understand that data, the better the opportunity that you have to develop one-to-one -one relevant conversations with your customers. Now, of course, you can create campaigns and communications with just a handful of database fields. But we know that the more personalized the content, the greater the time recipients spend with it and the higher value you see in return in terms of response rates and customer satisfaction. It's also possible to start with no data sometimes, but obviously having data means that you can be much more specific and the more specific you are, of course, the more relevant and engaging your communications can be. Um, as I previously referenced, XMPI has been providing software uh, that drives omnichannel cross-media communications for over 20 years. So we really understand data and we know how to use it effectively and efficiently across different channels. I'm sure this is something that's familiar to all of us. Um, we now live in an era of digital disruption. Consumers um, are now expecting immediacy and convenience. So they're actually driving the marketing communications. Virtually everyone on the planet has a mobile phone and they expect a frictionless, very simple and easy way of interacting and for communications. Um, they also expect accuracy and essentially they expect you to know about them and to provide the right content at the right time in the right way. Consumers are clearly more empowered and they've actually got their own big data at their fingertips um, in, in their mobile phone. So now, rather than consulting brochures and traditional ways of actually researching um, products and purchasing, they're actually looking at consumer reviews and competitive comparisons. They're looking at um, comparisons against different products. Um, and they very quickly change their mind in the process. So marketers need a way to be able to keep up with the consumers and to be, um, to be careful because any mistakes that they make in their communications can now very quickly go viral and be very detrimental. So it's important not just to have good, clean, accurate data at the start, but also to be careful on how you handle and manage that to provide the right data to the right person again at the right time. We're also seeing a shift um, away from traditional sort of linear marketing campaigns to much more dynamic um, campaigns where recipient interaction and behavior defines the flow and the content. Um, and there's also much more focus on acquire, not just acquiring customers, but actually retaining them over time through maintaining relevant timely communications and being consistent with the messaging across all of the channels that you're communicating with. This of course presents us with many challenges. 
Um, how do we manage the customer journey when each and every recipient is completely different and may take a completely different route based on their behavior? Each one is being driven by their own interest and their interaction with a, an, an element or elements within a campaign. And how do we manage the data that we've got consistently across multiple different channels, be it print or some of the digital channels, and give consumers the ability to change preferences or interact and yet instantly be able to communicate with them in an engaging way that's still relevant to those changes that they've just made, maybe only split seconds ago. And then of course, there's the need to manage customer privacy and to be GDPR compliant. And um, the real challenge is to be providing a way of collaboratively working across what has typically been a siloed organizational structure in many brands. So XMPI provides you with a platform to be able to handle the data, to provide dynamic customer journeys and presenting that data in a relevant way whilst actually um, taking more data in the, in the process and using it to refine it and to provide again, much more tailored and relevant content to each individual in a very, in a very uh, GDPR compliant way. Um, and also um, bringing in various different stakeholders um, to uh, be working on the same campaigns. But when you consider a single recipient and a journey that they may take um, in, a, in a marketing uh, um, journey, it's possible to understand those requirements and their behaviors, but doing it in real time is difficult. But how do you scale that up and provide every recipient with their own completely unique experience and communication? because everything has got to be constantly synchronized and be flexible for continual change. And of course, XMPI can provide you with this and the ability to scale up while still maintaining a, a relevant one-to-one -one conversation with each of those recipients from the database. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. Virtually every marketing platform out there talks purely to the digital channels. Um, XMPI is a solution that treats print as part of the digital mix. And there's a, there's a reason, a very important reason for print to be a part of that marketing mix. 70 to 80 percent of consumers will open or at least glance at every piece of mail that they receive. 70% are more likely to open it if it's personalized and 50% will spend more time with it because it's personalized. The Royal Mail tells us that 9% of mail actually, and that's printed mail, actually drives online behavior. And the DMA say that up to 20% response to customized mail, um, uh, they see a 20% response to customized mail sent 24 hours after a website visit. So all of these statistics are specific to print as part of the digital mix in a marketing campaign. We also know that print has higher response rates than just email marketing on its own. And that if you include print in the mix of a marketing campaign with other channels, it, it increases the overall response rate of those other channels as well. But also print can be tracked, so we can know if somebody can, has reacted to a particular piece of print, um, but it can also be used as a mechanism to, trans, to, to transparently link from the physical piece of print to the web content. And that can be done either via a QR code or using uh, other technologies such as uh, NFC or near field communications. You literally can tap your phone on a piece of print and it can take you to relevant content online. And of course that content doesn't have to just be generic content, it can actually still be relevant and maybe even personalized with consent to you as an individual within that campaign. Another interesting thing about print in the mix is that if you consider even a generic piece of direct mail or, or, or a poster that somebody interacts with, um, that can actually take them from the physical print to the digital space. So with direct mail, you, you, you don't need consent to send um, a, a mailing, a marketing communication. Somebody can respond and react to that piece of print. 
and they can go online and there you've got the opportunity to gain consent to actually start a digital conversation and to digitally onboard them. So effectively what I'm talking about here is actually taking a piece of print and turning it into a digital marketing onboarding tool as part of an ongoing digital campaign. So print is clearly a very powerful part of the marketing mix. Yet most software solutions out there that provide digital marketing don't include print at all in that mix. At XMPI, of course, print is, is a key part, a key channel in that mix. Um, and we also um, integrate seamlessly into the Adobe Creative Cloud environment. And that means that we can personalize print in a, a very clever way. We can personalize it within brand guidelines while maintaining um, the design integrity of each individual piece of print, um, but while still providing personalized, relevant, dynamic content uh, within it. Now, of course, in the digital channels, although we integrate into other uh, Adobe applications such as Dreamweaver, um, we also recognize that people in the digital space use a whole raft of different design and authoring tools. And so we have a web framework that allows them to create whatever content they need in email and web and social media, um, but still providing that common uh, platform and architecture to manage the data, the logic, and of course, any of the assets within a campaign. So really, oops, really in summary, um, XMPI as a, as a platform offers a complete portfolio um, to enable you to take data as simple or as sophisticated and clearly the, uh, the, the, the more rich the data, the better the results. But you can take that and you can actually very quickly not just create communication, but create a completely joined up interactive set of marketing experiences. Being a, a proud sponsor um, of the IPIA and Punchback Print, um, I was keen to sort of share a case study of one of our print customers on how they've actually taken XMPI and what it's done for their business. So this is about a company called CompuMail. They actually started in 2004 with XMPI software and they started purely offering personalized print. They were taking data and they were driving relevant personalized print communications. By 2009, their print capacity had literally um, ballooned to the point where they needed more capacity to generate higher volumes of dynamic personalized print. So they in increased their XMPI capability by taking on a print, basically a dynamic uh, print server from XMPI. But for me, the interesting um, point in the story here is in, by 2012, some of their big clients were actually approaching CompuMail themselves saying, we need you to offer digital communications as well as print from the data. But clearly, if you're not able to do that, we'll go somewhere else that offers the digital capability. So what CompuMail was able to do, because XMPI is such a scalable and modular solution, is they were able to take the omni-channel module and integrate that into their existing um, personalized printing capability. And that meant that they could not offer just personalized print, but now the complete integrated omni-channel capability. And that was so successful for them that by 2016, they actually uh, had to uh, basically replace their digital printers with continuous feed devices to handle that additional volume that they generated. And often people think of um, multi-channel or omni-channel campaigns as driving um, volume away from print. Um, and whilst it's true in terms of those channels do drive different communications, often there's an element of print in that. And by actually offering omni-channel campaigns, there's actually, uh, it unlocks this, this extra capability of print that's associated as part of a, a digital marketing campaign. So thank you all for your time. Thanks very much, guys. It's been a fascinating insight. I hope everybody now goes and looks at these technologies because if you are a print business, you can benefit from them and add incredible value and really increase the profit margins that your business is getting through the process of producing print.